Hey everybody, welcome back to GDPG, and we are back with more of the Hive Central Adventure of the Last Human. Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human. And we are in Pipe Central. Now you've got me doubting myself, because you've started it with <laughs> oh, no, the wrong name. Oh, uh, no, the, the Aquatic Adventure of the Last Human. Oh, wait, no. I actually that, said, that was it. I actually said it right. So, by the way, uh, one thing that I've learned since the last recording session, because if you can't tell, we're wearing different clothes, um, there are little secrets. So, like, I knew there were um, walls that you could go behind that, like, kind of hold secrets. But apparently, um, according to one less player that I was watching, these little, like... Um, like diamondy coral things right here, the like transparent ones. Generally, if you see those, it means that there's a hidden area. Huh? Yeah, I didn't know that. So, but what was the point of that area? So we actually cannot benefit from this right now. It's I think it's both a shortcut and there's probably some upgrade past here. But we need the uh, the harp, not the harpoon, the uh, torpedo to blow these things up. Okay. And if we get that, then we can blow it up, and then we could just take that shortcut. I mean, I understand the purpose, but every time in a game that I find a shortcut, I feel awesome, and then to find out that I also need an upgrade on top of that, I'm just like, come on. But that is, I mean, I mean, it's a stupid, fair. it's a stupid like argument to have. I, I completely understand. It. Well, I, I think from a design perspective, maybe the solution to that is maybe you shouldn't even be able to get to that like that secret without the, without the upgrade, and then the secret area itself is that extra benefit. Trash central. Yeah, no, so no, we can't no, go no, there no, yet. No, 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 bat mug. <laughs> Geek Arius gave me that. He actually. would. He would. Yeah, apparently, I know we've talked a little bit about his uh, show that's been in the works, uh, Nerd Day News, for a little while, but uh, we've decided to put that on hiatus. That's a shame. Yeah. But hey, we still, you know, got him. Yeah. Well, yeah, Geek Arius is great. I, like... <laughs> Not to shit talk Cujo, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> like I love it when sentences start like that. I know, right? So like, I I like recording with you, Nathan, because we're intangible. However, you guys remember him best, um, because you and I tend to have better game design related conversations. Like, yeah, like why are they hiding that hologram there? I guess it's fair. We we should probably read this. BEA attacks continue as a protest from fighting the slaughter of the last cows to slaughtering the creation of new GMO species. Will the BEA terrorists never be satisfied? Receptor close. So, like, why was that hidden? I, I guess, you know, it's sort of that, like, reward is finding it kind of thing. Yeah, the reward is plot. I could definitely see that. My, well, like, my question is I look at that and go, like, is this information that's actually not relevant? Is it just kind of like, oh man, now we know there's terrorist attacks. That's true. It's not really pertinent to the actual gameplay itself. It's yeah. just... It's I mean... Of, it's not... Like, I don't want to call it filler, because it's not really filler. No, if um, it's secret, it's not filler. That's it, for sure. It's it's flavor more than anything. Yeah. BEA attacks continue... Oh, it's the same thing. Are these... Maybe that's a, um, not a bug, but, like, a design bug, sort of say. Like, I feel like that's probably not, like, a code-related bug, but, like, oops, I placed this in two spots and forgot that I did that kind of thing. Could be. Unless they really wanted us to see that. Which is also, <laughs> it's totally possible, right? Like, it is probably one of the more interesting bits of, uh, of lore we've gotten out of those yet. Very interesting. Anyway, you were saying, and I interrupted you, that you're saying that I'm awesome. <laughs> so I, I like you the recordings that you and I do because we have a lot of design-oriented conversation, which is good because that's basically the whole point of the show. Um, because we're not like a lot of other YouTubers where we're just like loud and boisterous and um, you know occasionally obnoxious. Oh, yeah, this is definitely a boss. When you see uh, pulsating like massive organs, you know you're in the right place. Not cool. <laughs> oh, it's growing on everything. Yep. Oh, oh it's boy. the parasite. That makes sense. Atomic bubble gum. Yep, that's. Oh, 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 I am ill prepared. Are... I am ill prepared for this. I need my other harpoon. Oh boy, I. I don't think we should fight him yet. Oh. I do not. He is. He is very challenging. Um, but before we fight him, we need probably at least one speed upgrade and at least like the um 
So you, at some point we get a second harpoon and it goes above our head. Uh, so we get full like 360 rotation of where we can shoot. Super, super useful. Uh, definitely, like that boss is beatable without that stuff. But like, ah, I don't want to waste your guys' time because I know I'm going to struggle. So we like you just ran into a boss that you actually need the upgrades for. Yeah, and that's sort of... Huh. I think most of the time when you, like, legitimately cannot beat a boss without an upgrade, um, you actually... What happens in, is instead of getting the upgrade after you defeat the boss, what they usually do is they have the upgrade just kind of floating there, and mm -hmm. as soon as you pick it up, it initiates the boss battle. Um, from a design perspective, I think that's actually really smart because then you know exactly what you need to do. It's like, this was here for a reason, right? Like, yeah. There's very little room for doubt. I think the other thing that I realize that frustrates me about the minimap is a lot of games will do like some form of color coding to let you know, hey, you have explored this or not. Mm -hmm. And so you're looking and going, oh man, like you hit a point like that. And in Metroidvania, typically when you hit a point like that, your you're, you're answer is to go explore somewhere else until you find the solution to that to that problem that you had. It, it helps you know where you have and haven't yeah. been. And um, so it's really important to know that. It's really important to know where you have or have not been. Yeah, and the fact that they don't really um, do that in this game is a little um, unfortunate, I'd say. Yeah. Um, something else, too. So earlier uh, in this episode, we were going over onto this side of the pipe, and I was like, oh, I can't get past there because there's the, the toxic stuff, so I'll just go somewhere else. But... Uh, we actually just looped around it, and we still can get on this side. So, uh, like, I guess from a level design um, kind of perspective, huh. it's um, it's sort of an arbitrary obstacle. It, it looks like they were trying to do that. Um, you know, when you come across a path, and you're like, "Where, where does this go? I don't, I can't get through here because mm -hmm. the wall's too high, or whatever." And then you go a different route, and then you beat the boss, and after you beat the boss, then you, like, take a step to the right, and you're like, oh, there's that wall, I can just jump down and backtrack really fast now. That's what it looked like it was trying to do. Wow. Which one is this? Is this a new boss? It is a boss. Jeez. Oh, which one is this? All the bosses. I think the I know which one it is, and I know I'm not gonna be... Oh, okay, no, this one's actually okay. I still don't have as many upgrades as I would like at this point. How did I just, like... How you you so many of the, uh... You had a shield. Well, I got hit. Yeah, no, I mean, you had a shield. No, you just... Well, I, I, I thought that you were asking, like, how did you not die there? Oh, no, I, um... I was saying, like, how did I just skip a lot of the upgrades? Last, the first time I played this game, um... I went a very different path, it seems, and, uh... <laughs> had a lot more upgrades before I started encountering these bosses! Oh, God. Yeah, there's something about these bosses that's, like, obviously more, uh, dark. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this guy is particularly grim, right? Because, oop, he is, like, full-on mutated dead fish that still is, like... I mean, I guess he's probably, like, the parasites are controlling his body more than anything, right? Why? It... So his name is the Forgotten One. I... Who forgot him? Can you still shoot the fish, or you have to shoot the gas, or... You just have to survive until it returns oh, no. to his body. The host. I don't know. It's kind of like he was forgotten about and just like left here to rot, you know? How is he still going? Ah! Parasites, man. I'm actually <laughs> handling this a lot better than I thought I was going to... You don't need no upgrades, but you should run. I think this is the boss that taught me that um, spamming the harpoons really is sort of the key to success in this game. Oh, yeah. Um, as much as, like, that kind of... Oh, oh, shit, 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 get out, get out! Mm. Got pinned. Uh, Probably should have gone the other way where the gases won't follow me. Um, but yeah, this is, I think, the boss battle that taught me that spamming the harpoon is the more efficient way to play, simply because... You have to put yourself in that danger. Yeah. Which I guess, like, it's kind of smart, right? Because, like, if you want to shoot fast, um, you have to be pretty close to the enemy. So that keeps the player in the action. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, my. This is where the... Sometimes those, those risks, they'll, they'll get you. Yeah, well, this is also definitely at that point where having the, uh, the boost is super useful because at that point I would have just boosted it away 
and been fine, but obviously I don't have that yet, so it's like... There's a fine balance between, uh... When to use the, uh... Quick harpoons and when to boogie. And that time he just didn't follow you any more times. Like, he, he only charged at you twice. Yeah, I feel like if I were smart about it, maybe I could, like... Um... You know, like... What's it called? Like, Mexican bull ring dodge Toro Toro him <laughs> like <laughs> he dashes at me and I kind of move off to the side and he just dashes past me you know you're talking about a matador matador yeah I could do the matador <laughs> thing I don't know man I couldn't think of <laughs> oh that's good <laughs> okay maybe those little flies are yeah those have to be the forgotten like that's the thing that you're actually fighting because look yeah. at all the fish carcasses in the background like at this point they must have eaten everything else around them oh that's fair the freaky part is oh. that they all oh, just one shot it. You yeah. know what? You should probably try again in the next episode. All right. I will say, though, the one thing I think I like the most about this guy, if I can point it out before we end the episode. Come on. Come on. Give me. Oh, fine. Well, I'll wait for you, I guess. I okay. love his dangly organ. Just like in the oh. intestine that's just like dripping ooze. It just <laughs> feels. Oh, God. It feels, it feels, uh, it feels right for this game. That's fair. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, oh no. G -g 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 well, everybody, um... Well, what's our question of the day? Yeah. Uh... uh we could, we can actually talk about the, um, the, the mini-map mechanics and how, like, it doesn't change based on the areas you've explored. I mean, the one thing is, is that the main map that you see at the save stations, it does change. It, it shows you... Um, no data for areas that you haven't been to, but since we can only see that when we're at a safe station, um, it's not as uh, useful, I guess? Yeah, that makes sense. So the question of the day, I guess, is um, how, I don't know, do you think how necessary that is in a Metroidvania or an exploration game to like show you areas where you haven't been to give you that kind of comparison? Also, like, what would you have done to improve it for a Metroidvania like this, what would you have done to and ha actually improved that, yeah, that like mechanic? Yeah, like this mini-map specifically, like what would you have done to that? I like that I actually a lot better. Because I will say, before we finish this off, is that definitely it's a more organic map, and that's very unusual for a Metroidvania. They tend to be blocky. It's true. And that's it's funny that you mentioned that too, especially since it is pixel art, and it is already kind of like blocky, but still feels really organic. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Well, we should go now. <laughs> so, all right, guys. We'll see you next time when Chris finally beats the Forgotten One. Yeah. Bye, everybody. See you. <laughs> <laughs> dun 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 d